Bitcoin trades above $24,000, Ether trades below $1,700. USDC issuers circle to increase staff by up to 25% amid layoff season. German DZ Bank adds digital currencies to asset management services. Kim Kardashian Floyd Mayweather filed motion to dismiss crypto promotion lawsuit. Canadian regulators say no to algorithmic stablecoins. Welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Ruchi Sharma. Cryptocurrency markets recovered on Thursday despite the Federal Open Market Committee giving no indications that they are considering pausing rate hikes in the near future. Bitcoin traded around $24,500 levels. Rishal Khatako joins us to tell us how the global cryptocurrency market is performing today. IC15 index of cryptocurrencies was trading down by 0.1% at 33,198 points. The minutes from the January 31st February to 1st meeting of the Federal Reserve's Federal FOMC suggested both hawkish and dovish sentiments among the participants, but notably missing was any discussion of a pause in the US central bank's rate hike cycle. Inflation remained well above the Fed's 2 percent target and the labor market remained very tight, contributing to continuing upward pressures on wages and prices, according to the minutes. In another interesting news, Crypto Trade Association Chamber of Digital Commerce has taken action against the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and Chair Gary Gansler for its regulation by enforcement campaign threatening the U.S. digital assets market and investors. In order to prevent the SEC's crypto crackdown in the US, the Chamber of Digital Commerce filed an amicus brief in the SEC way. Wahi arguing that the case unfairly labels several crypto assets as securities. Market participants will keep an eye on whether the central banks will continue their hawkish stance or relax monetary policies in the coming weeks. Meanwhile, investment giant BlackRock is offering an exchange-traded fund, the iShares Future Metaverse Tech and Communication ETF, which will focus primarily on tech companies that are exposed to Metaverse even, even as some institutional investors appear to have lost interest in the concept after its immense popularity during the recent bull run. The global crypto market capitalization is currently at 1.11 trillion dollars, representing a 1.5% increase over the past 24 hours. The total crypto market volume was uh, over the same period was $60 billion, a 13.50% decrease. After a raft of strong economic data and a number of hawkish Fed speakers, markets now anticipate not just another 25 basis point hike in May, but the chance of central bank hiking by 50 basis points in March. Stock futures ticked higher. Futures tied to the Dow Jones Industrial Average added 85 points or 0.26 percent. S&P 500 futures gained 0.42 percent and Nasdaq 100 futures jumped 0.77 percent. Bitcoin was trading at $24,249, up by 0.3 percent. Ethereum, the second largest crypto, was up by 1.2 percent, trading at $1,665. BNB was up by 1 percent to trade at $311. Solana Soul was up by 3 percent and was trading at $24.3. Next on the list, Avalanche AVAX was trading at $20.3, higher 0.1 percent. Polygon Matic was trading up by 2 percent to trade at $1.3. Cardano's ADA token was up by 1.5% to trade at $0.39. Next on the list, Shiba Inu was trading up by 3%. Ripple's XRP token traded at $0.40, up by 1.4%. Polkadot was up by 2% to trade at $7.2. 
However, Doge, the popular meme coin, was trading down by 1.1% at $0.085. Thank you, Vishaka, for your in-depth analysis of the global cryptocurrency market. And now, back to the headlines. USD coin issuer Circle plans to increase its workforce by 15 to 25% in 2023 amid a sea of layoffs across the industry. When a significant chunk of industry-wide firms is laying off staff to mitigate their financial woes, Circle has gone against the tide to hire more people. 41% of all layoffs in 2023 came from the cryptocurrency industry. Major cryptocurrency firms that made significant employee cuts include Polygon, Chain Analysis, Bitrex, Hobby, Crypto.com, Coinbase, Gemini, Genesis and Wire. By the end of 2022, the stablecoin issuer had roughly 900 employees with plans to increase the headcount by 135 to 225 in 2023. However, staff numbers are growing slower than they did in 2022, when the headcount more than doubled from 2021. DZ Bank, Germany's second largest bank in terms of asset size, will fully integrate digital currencies into its asset management services in collaboration with the digital asset firm Metaco. According to the announcement, DZ Bank selected Metaco's custody platform Harmonize to offer digital currencies to its institutional clients. Nils Christopiet, an executive at DC Bank, said that the Metaco Harmonize platform suits their requirements in terms of security and scalability. Metaco has been actively collaborating with various key players within Germany. On February 9th, the digital asset management platform announced a partnership with the German Deka Bank to launch a blockchain-based tokenization platform. According to the announcement, the infrastructure is expected to be built in 2023 and may be released in 2024. Kim Kardashian, Floyd Mayweather and other celebrities are looking to convince a judge to dismiss another revised attempt to hold them liable for allegedly promoting Ethereum Max without proper disclosure. The celebrities asked a California federal judge to dismiss a second amendment complaint from Ethereum Max investors filed in December 2022. According to the defendants, the renewed allegations pushed the same basic theory forward that the court had previously dismissed. Meanwhile, Kardashian has already been fined once because of Ethereum Max promotions on social media. On October 3, 2022, the American socialite reached a $1.26 million settlement with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission after failing to disclose that she received a $250,000 payment to promote the crypto project. The SEC has recently issued a warning to celebrities who promote crypto. On Feb 17th, the SEC reminded stars that the law requires them to disclose how much they are getting paid and from whom when promoting investments in securities. The Canadian securities administrators made up of securities regulators from each of the 10 provinces and three territories in Canada have published a long list of new requirements for crypto companies wishing to stay legally compliant and stablecoin platforms are clearly in the agency's crosshairs. Crypto asset trading platforms within the country will now be prohibited from allowing customers to buy or deposit stablecoins or other value-referenced crypto assets without the CSA's prior written consent. Obtaining consent means meeting the administrator's many due diligence requirements, including ensuring that the stablecoin is fiat-backed. For greater certainty, we would not expect to provide consent in respect of a VRCA that is not fully backed by an appropriate reserve, but rather maintains its value through an algorithm, wrote the regulator in a notice published on Wednesday. The CSA requires that trading platforms allow such tokens to be bought or sold only if their reserves are made of highly liquid asset, that is cash and cash equivalents, and only if those reserves are held with a qualified custodian. They must also be subject to monthly review by independent auditors, which must be made public in a timely manner. Now let's go to Vishakha Thakur to get an update on the three buzzing stocks of the day. Typically, NFT marketplaces restrict which cryptocurrencies can be used to purchase assets, but Uniswap's NFT marketplace has just launched a new feature that changes everything. Uniswap NFT traders can now purchase their NFTs using any Ethereum blockchain token, such as stable coins like USDC or Tether, or even a meme coin like Shiba Inu via a simplified interface. 
Uniswap's new universal router contract, according to the crypto startup, finds the most cost-efficient route to complete a swap from any Ethereum-based token into the required token for the NFT sales and then pushes that crypto to OpenSea's Seaport protocol to finalize the transaction. Uniswap is dramatically simplifying the NFT purchasing process for those who may need to exchange one cryptocurrency for another before purchasing an NFT. The company also stated that it intends to support combined sums of multiple different cryptocurrencies for a single NFT sale in the near future, which means that if an NFT costs 1 ETH, a trader could buy it with a combination of USDC and Tether or DAI and SHIB or Uniswap's native token UNI and Chainlink, for example. Uniswap was trading at $7, up 2.45% in the last 24 hours with a market capitalization of $5 billion. Stax, a layer 1 blockchain solution that aims to bring smart contracts and decentralized applications to Bitcoin, is currently driving market growth. The cryptocurrency has gained 30.19% in the last 24 hours, bringing its price to $0.835. With 143.72% growth, STX has risen to the top of list of best gainers for the week. The Stax community is ecstatic about digital currency for two reasons. The protocol recently published two white papers that will aid in its mission to make Bitcoin a more programmable smart contract hub. The first release is SBTC, a two-way trustless Bitcoin peg system. The second is a trustless Bitcoin peg in the Nakamoto white paper. The SBTC release will enable the shift or swift transfer of assets to and from the Bitcoin protocol, introducing trustless writing to the BTC protocol. This release uh, complements Stacks 2.0, which provided red access to the Bitcoin protocol. STX was trading at $0.8573, up 33.14% in the last 24 hours, with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Polygon Scan, a network explorer, encountered some issues, resulting in the blockchain not processing any transaction for a brief period of time. Some users even speculated that the network had gone down. The IT of Polygon Scan Explorer sparked rumors that the Polygon blockchain was down. The Polygon team also addressed the fact that the problem was caused by a few out-of-sync nodes. Although the Polygon blockchain has not experienced an outage as of yet, the last outage occurred last year. Polygon scan problems arose shortly after Polygon announced the layoff of 20% of its employees. Around 100 employees were affected by the decision. The Polygon team stated that the layoff was part of the company's consolidation process. The company also emphasized its sturdiness in the layoff announcement, revealing that it has more than $250 million in treasury alongside $1.9 billion MATIC. Polygon was trading at $1.40, up 5.45% in the last 24 hours with a market capitalization of $12 billion. Thank you, Vishaka. Well, that's all in today's special bulletin. This is me, Ruchi Sharma, signing off. For more such updates, please like, share and subscribe to 3.0 TV and have a great day.